Good morning. How else do I say good morning? No, hello everyone. I hope you're well and had a lovely weekend. It was really blowy, really windy. We didn't do very much because of the weather. We did lots of schoolwork, but we didn't really go out much. But the sun is shining today, which means there will be lots of these guys flying around in the garden. And this is going to be our inspiration for today. We're going to create some bumblebees. We're either going to paint or draw them. It's up to you what you want to use for this, by the way. And we're going to make them a little hive to live in, just out of, a, out of some bubble wrap. So I hope you're all well today. Hello to my Dunbarney crew. Hello to my Abernethy crew. And hello to anyone else from Perth and Ross or in any other region that are watching us today. Hello to Ooh. anyone that's new to our lessons. It's nice to yeah, but don't, don't touch the water yet. So I'm Mrs C, it's nice to see you this morning. I've got my boys here with me, I've got Alex and I've got Harris and we're gonna be doing an online live art lesson that afterwards will be posted so you can catch up later if you are not live. Now today, we're tying in with seasons, we're doing living things and we're looking at things that are going on in our gardens at the minute. So uh, Harris has been doing living things for his topic, haven't you? And you did a really good mini topic last week. What was the animal you chose to do it on? What did you do your mini topic on? You made your little model. He made it on bumblebees. He's been a bit shy today. So he knows lots about bumblebees. So this will tie beautifully with what he's been doing in class. Right, so let's just quickly go through the resources in case you missed what we were needing. I didn't do a little video last night just because there wasn't really much to say. So you will need, and you don't want to pop this. It's very tempting to, but if you pop it now, the bubbles will no longer be there, boys. No, 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 no. You need a tiny bit of bubble wrap. You need a piece of paper. I didn't say what colour paper you needed because it really doesn't matter. Probably want to go like for a high V sort of colour, however. Um, you need some paint, some liquid paint. We're going for brown and I actually found when I was looking for it this morning some bronze and some gold paint as well to add a little bit of sparkle. But it's up to you what colour you want to use. And well, you can do a bit of both. And you also need something for step two to make our bees. Now, it could be paints, it could be pens, it could be pencils, it could be oil pastels. In the class, the way that I normally do this is we normally do this over two lessons. So in week one, we would make the hive with the bubble wrap. We would do a bit of printing. We would leave it to dry. And the following week, we would create the bees to go on top. But... I don't really want to do a two week lesson. So we're actually going to do this in one step today. So when it comes to doing the bubble wrap, try and leave the middle of your paper. Try and leave that bit as paper and that way you can still put your bee in the middle. It'll still be dry. Good morning to, I'm assuming it's Sophie. Karen might be there as well. Good morning, little Miss Sophie. And it looks like Lily, my superstar from P6 is also watching this morning. Good morning to you, Lily. It's nice to see you. Remember tomorrow, doing portraits tomorrow, Lily, but not with a grid. Yeah, this one's not happy about this. I don't want to do it. He doesn't want to do it. He doesn't want to do it. I think we're going to have to really, really twist his arm tomorrow. Um, he finds it really hard. That's not a reason not to do it, though, is it? It is. I don't like it. Right, first things first. Let's get wrap. Let's get bubble popping. So, oh, and Mrs. Ro is watching. Mrs. Ro said that she was going to try and do this because she's going to try and put this into a picture on... Um, what's the guy called again? Oh, Grayson Perry. Mrs. Rowe wants to do a picture to send in to Grayson Perry. So we better do a good job to see. Who's that? He's an artist. Right, boys, do you want bronze or gold to start off with? Or do you want brown? Whatever that is. That's gold. You can, both, you can both share it. Right, what we're going to do first of all is we're just going to paint a little bit of the inside of our bubble wrap. Don't go right to the edges. You'll get paint all over the table. I hope by now you've kind of realised that covering up the table is a really good idea and I hope also you're not wearing your best clothes today. If you've not got a painting shirt on, you might want to put on an old an old t-shirt. So just do a little blob in the middle. Harris, honey, it didn't say to use the water, darling. That's just going to make the paint all runny. That's for step two. It's okay. Don't panic. No, I already did that to make my brush Why? more wet. Did, did, did I say put... Yeah, it's because it was super dry. Don't like it. So I Please don't to... put water into your paint because that just makes it really runny and not as strong a colour. The only time you need to add water to paint is if you're wash, um, changing colour to clean your brush or if you're using watercolours. We're not using watercolours today, but we might be for step two. 
There's an awful lot of uh, do what I see and what I do today going on here, isn't there? Right, so you're just making a little, almost like a little splodge in the middle of your bubble wrap. Just a little bit like this. Okay, don't go right to the edges, otherwise you get paint all over the table and also it'll be a little bit wasted, to be honest. Okay, so next up what you're going to do, I'm just going to put my brush there. Wasted. Yeah, it'll just be a bit wasted. Next up what I'm going to do is on top of my splodge, I'm just going to put the corner of my paper. I'm going to try and get as much of it on as I can. Can I wash this off now? Uh, no, just leave it like that. So I'm going to try and put as much of the paper out. Can you move over a little bit just so I can show you? I'm just going to put the corner of the paper into the bubbles and I'm just going to gently press and rub with my finger the paper on top of the bubbles. Okay, so how is your fast? Did you feel looking fast today, boy? Because you want to get it done and over and over and over and over. Excuse me, why are you painting all the bubble that? I thought it was meant to. No, you weren't meant to. As per usual, you're not looking and listening. Only a corner. So when you lift it up, you've just got the corner done. Because remember, you want to leave that. That's perfect. Well, that's okay. We can have uh, Harris's panicking because he's done it in the middle. But I mean, Harris's bee can easily go up there. That's okay. We can put some more down in the corner now. And you can change colour if you want. So can I actually have your... Can I... Oh, thanks. Do you want to have my brown? Do, or was that the brown or is that the bronze? What have you used? I've used the brown. You brought the brown as well. Mm -hmm. Right, well, um, and they do it like this. Oh, it's a stumble. Why do you have to be so different? Oh, you can do it that way if you want. Yeah, yeah. Just that. Right, to go. Sure right. Okay, next up. Um, I'm going to change my colour now just to make it a bit more interesting. You don't have to do this, and we're just going to get a little bit of bronze. It might look like for doing oh, this fun. one more time that you've already got enough paint on the bubbles but don't forget mm. the paint transferred onto your paper mm. i'm glad i found that one it is gold oh, it'll be a bit sticky because it's been in the cupboard i don't know how long it's been for so remember you're just taking the corner of the paper and you are just mm -hmm. sticking it on top of the paper well yeah but don't put any in the middle because that's where you want your bumblebee to be or your honeybee or whatever type of bee you're planning on doing Mm -hmm. I'm surrounding the brown with it. Are you done? Is Good that job. okay? Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, so we've now got two corners done. Yeah. I might even put a little bit down the edge, you know. Okay, it's really, really simple. It gives you a really, really nice effect. Um, can I have your gold brush if that's okay, Harris? Oh, okay. Alex, sorry, wrong person. <gasps> I never really thought about you boys when I named you. I was so aware of the fact that I didn't really want to have names that had the same starting letter or, you know, had a nice, when we went with Alex, it was a nice traditional name. So when we had Harris, I wanted another nice Scottish traditional name. But what I didn't really consider was the fact that your names sound, the sound of your names are quite similar. And that's becoming apparent uh -huh. at the minute with Mirren, because she's uh -huh. trying to talk. And you're Alex, and he's Pyx. So now when I'm shouting them, I'm, I almost like Alex, Harris, Alex, Harris, Alex. Same, same sound at the end. Okay, right, I'm just gonna do one more corner up here. I'm blathering a bit this morning. That's lovely. That's really nice. To be honest, this isn't a very tricky lesson to do. This is a nice easy one. It's quite, quite creative and a bit of fun. Love it, darling. Right, this time try and not put it in the middle because that's where your bumblebee's gonna be gonna go. So Keep saying bumblebee's do I do it on every corner. Yeah. Yeah. If you do it the opposite way, which is what Alex has been doing, he's been painting the bubbles and then putting them down on top of the paper. That works as well, but often what happens is you press too hard then and you actually push all the spaces in between the bubbles down as well. So it ends up being a little bit flatter. Mm -hmm. Um I'll show you there's a little bit of a difference there so that's what I did there just to see what the difference in effect is so it is far better to, to do the bubble wrap and then put the paper down on top of the bubble wrap as opposed to doing it the way that he's doing it no. but no, no, Alex has always got to be different and do things my paintbrush went camouflage I keep my hand on it okay. I'll use up the excess on it because I need some for my extra edges Karen's here hello Karen 
our NHS worker. Hope you're mm. doing okay. Now Karen's watching. Not Karen. <laughs> Karen gave you the nice bubbles the other week. That's very kind of her. She's been working hard for the NHS and she's still thinking about you lot. Oh, that's looking good, Harris. We've got Harris's now coming together really nicely. And Alex, you're doing a good job as well. Alex is a lot more perfect. <laughs> Satisfying. Don't pop them though. You can. I'll tell you what we can do once we've finished. You can pop them, but then they'll be covered in pain. Oh, yeah. okay. you. Another problem we've got is if I was doing this in the classroom, I would never ever have enough bubble wrap for everyone. So the boys and girls around the table would have to take it in turns. So a lot of my lessons at home can take twenty minutes, thirty minutes, but in the classroom, when you've got you know nearly 30 children, so or post-lockdown, 15 children, um, there's going to be a lot more sharing going on. I don't know how I'm going to cope when we go back to school, I don't know what my lessons are going to be like of what we're going to be doing. Probably doing a lot of outdoor art. Right, that's looking amazing. Very, very, very happy with that. So as I say, try and steer away from the middle, because if you do put bubbles in the middle, you are going to then struggle to get your bee done. Where's Harris gone? He died, I think. <laughs> he probably went on What are you doing? Mrs. Mrs. Rose watching, she will not be impressed. Right, that is me finito with my bumblebee hive. I'm just waiting on the boys. They're still finishing these off and I've left a space in the middle for our bee. So I'm just going to give them a little bit more time. Harris, could you come and get this finished, please? Because we're going to move on to the bees in a minute. So I'm getting rid of the bubble wrap and the paints. So just put a little bit more of bubble wrap there around the corners. So give it a nice press, give it a nice rub as well. Like you're giving mummy one of her nice back rubs that you like to give her. Oh, <laughs> he just embarrassed him. Oh. He, no, he loves giving mummy back rubs. He loves trying to fix it. Right, maybe he needs a little bit more paint on it. It's kind of dry down a bit. <laughs> right, let's talk about the bees next. So, this is a print off taken from the internet about the anatomy of the bee. Because when I've been researching bees with Harris lately, I have been very interested. Harris, there will be no bouncy castle. There will be no iPad after this. Stop being silly. Nobody's laughing. Could you please do more like this? Because that's fantastic. You need to do the other two corners for me. Yeah. Sorry, I got distracted there. So we have been researching bees on the internet this week, last week. And I was very, very interested to find out that actually... There's three, I always just used to do bumblebees with a body and then a head. Turns out there's actually three main parts of the bumblebee. There's the abdomen, which is this bit here, where the stinger comes out of. There's the middle section, which is a little bit smaller, which is the thorax. It's about half the size, maybe two thirds of the size of your abdomen. And then there's the head. Now, the thing that I found quite interesting was, whenever I've done bumblebees in the past, I've always done it as one sheet for a start, and also I've had everything kind of coming out of the, the main, the abdomen. It turns out that all the six legs attach to the thorax and the wings. Another interesting fact, there are not two wings on a bumblebee. How many wings are there on a bumblebee? Four. Four. And when they buzz against each other, when they flap against each other, that's what causes that buzzing sound. So when you hear a bee buzzing, that's what's making the sound. What Interesting the sound? facts this week, Mrs. Cochrane learned. Oh, when the two, wings. when the four wings rub against each other, they make that buzz noise. But this was the most interesting fact that I found out. All six legs come from the thorax. So even though you've got your bumblebee model like that, actually, if you were to turn it around the other way, you would find that that leg goes in there. Right. Should we get on to our bees now? Have you finished those corners? It doesn't look like it. So you're not going to be able to move on to step two until that job's finished. Yes, it's perfect. You've not left a lot of space in the middle for your bumblebee, but we'll be fine. Okay, we are going to use, just because I've got them and they're, you know they're my favourite, we are going to use some oil pastels for the bumblebee. However, if you want to use paints, you are more than welcome to use paints. I've actually looked out paints because I thought the boys might want to use them. But I've just looked at these paints. The six palette paint because oh. I don't want to have to wash up lots at the end today. We've got a lot on the cards today. Alex, could you pass over the oil pastels, please? 
If you are using these paints, just remember keep them nice and thick and nice and bubbly. Keep the colour nice and strong. Or you can still use your pre-mixed paint as well that you want, or you can go these once they don't open up and go to them, please. Right, let's go on to our bumblebees. Right, I'm going to start off, just in case I must make a mistake, I'm actually going to draw it out in a light colour. So I'm going to go for like a light sort of peachy, whitey colour, but it's up to you guys at home. If you're feeling brave today, go for it. So I am just going to, Alex, could you sit up in your chair, please? I'm just going to sit and go with, where's my light? There, that's what I was looking for. So, and we've got lots of different, I've got this lovely print out here, so you can actually draw your bee in different positions if you want boys and girls and adults. So I need to rock it for you. Right, so let's first of all start off just by drawing the actual shape that we want. Actually, you're not going to see this if I do this too light, so I'm going to do it a little bit darker so it shows up at home. So I'm going to go from a head, which is the smallest part. I'm going to go for my thorax, which is the middle part. It's about double the size of the head. And then double the size of that again, let's just say we're going to go for the abdomen. Now, if you, if you just... Watch what I do first, Alex. If I just draw them as shapes first, I'll show you this before you start this at home. We can then add in all our details. So I've just gone for the head, which is a round shape, an oval for the thorax, and a larger oval for the abdomen. So just do that for your first part, and then we can go and change the shape in a second. Okay, so once you've got that in place, you can then change the shape. That's okay. Well, you've done it in a light colour, so you can actually overlap it. That's why you draw all in a light colour. You can't. But you can, no, I'm not joking. But you, can, but you can cover up your mistakes. Okay, so once you have got your shapes and you're happy with it, go over them a little bit harder and change the actual angle of them. Harris. Could you please come and draw your bumblebee? Thank you. Because otherwise you're going to have to do it once I turn this off and then you're going to take longer than the half hour, that promise you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right, another thing that we realised when we were looking about bees is that the bug eyes are always on the side. So you'll also want to put that in. There you go. Do you want a picture to copy from? It's a nice big one there. This is the one that mum's copying. Can you see it okay? Mm -hmm. Where are the wings attached to as well? That was another thing we realised. Thought about the thorax as well, that's right. Now, Harris, is that your bumblebee away down there? Make it much, much, much bigger. Okay, look at the size of mummies. Because you want that's it to have- queen bee. Is that the queen bee? You want it to have impact. Okay, right, so we're gonna get our eyes in now. Now we can go with the darker colours. I normally leave the darker colours till last, because if you do make a mistake, you can't just cover them up. So you can start now to build up and colour in the inside of the bees. Often when I do this in class as well, boys and girls don't like to colour inside the lines. Now we're using oil pastels, which is one of my favourite things to use because they basically are little sticks of paint, dried paint. So when they start to move, they start to melt again and they start to turn back into that paint consistency. So if you don't like mess, you don't want to have to constantly be tidying up your classroom, this is a perfect thing to use. But I would not use the black to last because if you make a mistake and you try and cover it up, like I'm going to show you right now with the eye, it doesn't. No matter how hard you try, it will not cover up. So don't use the black until the end. Hi, Granny. Granny's watching. <laughs> the thorax, yes, it's the thorax. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with thorax. Right, I'm going to go in for some white. White's lovely, but you need to use that quite early on because it won't show up on top of your dark colours. So if you're planning on using white for any of your bumblebee, I would use that at the very beginning. Um, yeah, honey? That's okay. Just remember, you've got three parts of your bumblebee. You've got the head and the thorax and then the tail. You know this from when you made your lovely model. And remember where your wings come out of? And how many wings are there? Four. Four, but you might only see two because the other two will be down the other side. And just remember that the tail is the biggest part, but nothing actually comes out of the tail, apart from that evil sting. Actually, I shouldn't say evil, that's not fair. We're doing a good job. Right. So 
So we're starting to build up the shape then of our bee. And we are going to use, oh, talking about white, I forgot about my wings. So my wings are really large. And if you look at the size of that wing, if I just measure that with my hand, the wing is actually, my goodness, it's pretty much the size of half of the bee. Let me measure that again. Can I see that? Yeah, just give me a second, I'm just showing everyone else. So you've got half, there's the wing. Measure it from the tail, yep, halfway. So whatever size you have made your bee, cut it in half with your hands, and then that's the size you want your wing to be. And look at the lovely shape of the wing. So it's got a straightish edge to it. And then it'll tail round and it's in two parts as well. And then you'll want to colour that in in a light colour. Could be a light grey, could be a white, could be even have a tinge of blue to it. Light grey. Okay, and then with some of your darker colours, so I'm going to go for the dark brown, you can outline that. I definitely would outline that at the end because again, if you make a mistake, you cannot cover up dark colours. You can cover up light colours. So that's why I always would do my drawing in it. If you're doing it with paint, same with the paint, I would do my paint with a light colour first and then build up to the darks. And that's when you're painting anything, I would do that. Not just bumblebees, whatever it is that you're painting. But yeah, if you are wanting to Go and treat yourself to anything today, Mrs. Rowe. I know that you're getting into your art at the minute. Go and buy yourself a packet of oil pastels. They are my favourite. I go through so many oil pastels a year. That's always the first thing on my list for Mrs. Johnston at the beginning of the year when she asks what I need. What else do you think I use a lot of in the classroom? Paint. No? Don't uh, I hate paint? Sharpies. Yes! That's my other favourite, Sharpies. Uh, Alex, what will happen to your arm? Goodness sake. I fell in no. gold. Tonight's not, tonight's not supposed to be a bath night either. Yeah, so that's my two my two favourite things well, that I, I always ask goes all poor Mrs. Over Johnston. She drive that poor woman nuts. She won't be missing me, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Johnston gets Done. asked every year. Oh, that's Done. lovely. Look at Harris's. Isn't that cute? I think however you've got You've left a big massive space here, so you could either put more bubble wrap there or what about another another bee? Maybe that could be a drone or a worker bee and could you have a big one for your queen? Um, right, so I'm blathering again. So yeah, if you um another thing that I use a lot of is masking tape. You know I like using my masking tape for masking areas off. But no, I don't use a lot of paint in the classroom because I only get 15 minutes for my class classes. And it's um too much to put out and clean up in 50 minutes. I can't use paint a lot. Mm. Mrs. Patterson was great this year. She let me have classes for a whole afternoon. And um, we had a little bit of extra time and I got to use paint in those sessions because instead of only getting the boys and girls for 50 minutes, I got them for the whole afternoon. So we did some amazing work, didn't we? Oh, Sophie's okay. watching, Sophie will tell me. Uh, no need to do the legs. In fact, it's a wee shame because primary three and primary two were just about to get their whole afternoons. I think they got one or two. What's the black one? Is it? That's just his mouth. What's that called? It's got a very nice Latin name there. Mandibles. Okay, the mandibles. So it's coming together now. Now the last thing we'll need to do is, of course, the antennae, which come out of the head. And the mistake is when people draw things like this, they always do them as a straight line. But look at that actual way that the shape down. Can I just show this again? So look again, I mean, they use these to feel their way around. So look at the curve they've got on them. They don't just stick out with a ball on the end. Um, look at the lovely, lovely shape I've of them. I've got one too many, like, all my bees, all my bees. That's okay. I didn't even see that until now. You could join two together to make them thicker. It's not really a big deal. Or maybe it's like a, a, a mutant, a mutant, <laughs> a mutant bee. I love them. I think you've done a lovely job. Right, so we've got our uh, antennae on there. And then the last thing are our legs. Now, this is another thing. Sometimes when people are doing the legs, they just do them as little sticks. But if you even look, they've got lots of different parts to the leg. And again, they come out at angles from the body. So they've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, 
four main parts. They're a bit like our legs, you know, they've not just got one bone. Well, there's no bones actually in the bee. But look at the angle they come out of, and don't forget they come out of that thorax, which is nice and textured, and that's actually quite fluffy, that part of the bee. This is the hard shell, but this bit's actually quite fluffy if you look at the textures of it. So they all come out of the thorax, and look at the angle. Not only look at the angle, look at the length of them. That's much longer than the whole abdomen. Okay, so look at the length of your legs. Because often when people draw bees, bees legs, they just do little sticks. So look at the shape of them. Look at the angle that they come out. Sorry, to <laughs> Sorry. Pulls off my, pulls off my. Right, so, I was just asking how we do it. So we're gonna go through it. So look at the angle. So you've got one section that comes down and look at the direction it comes in. Then it comes across pretty much the same size of its face. Then it comes down again. I'm just doing it as lines first. And then it comes out. Done. That's lovely, sweetie. Well done. Okay, so just draw it as lines first and then you can actually pad it out. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're drawing animals or people or figures, sometimes even buildings actually, always look at the basic shapes that you can see first before you add on all the detail. Okay. Just look at the basic shape. It's all about shape. So we've got that back leg now. And if you want another tip, use your oil pastel or your pencil or your paintbrush and check the angles that things are coming out at. And look at where things go in relation to what it is you're copying from. Keep looking as well. Often when people are drawing, they don't actually bother to look. They just think, oh, I know what a bee looks like. Go away and draw it. Even I do that. And it wasn't until Harris was doing all of his research last week that I realised that I've been drawing bees long, wrong for a very long time. Hey. So Harris, you've actually really taught me something last week with all your modelling. Not just now because it'll be too noisy for the screen. Okay, so again, just do it as lines just now. I still haven't put a lot of black on yet because I'm not finished. That's going to be my finishing touch. This paint's already dry. Is your paint already dry? So actually you could really annoying because the it's quite, are sticking up. And it's quite rough. Um, so actually you now actually could draw on top of the so if your bee accidentally goes on top of the paint, it really won't matter now. The legs are also quite thick. People think they're just really, really thin. But the legs are actually quite quite thick as well. Right, so I've got two legs done now. And I've just got my last one to do. Which is the one that comes out in the middle. Harris, I asked you to stop doing that because it's really noisy. I have to get, I have to get Super Nanny in here, Mrs. Rule. Did you find her number? I asked Mrs. Rule for Super Nanny's number yesterday. I don't know if I found it yet. What? <laughs> Just cause. Just cause I feel like I could do with a little bit of help some days. <laughs> Right, legs done. Okay, so look at the direction of the legs. Look at where they are. And for our finishing touch, I think I've done a few things. I might add a little bit of texture actually onto the middle part, make it a bit more hairy. Like, That's lovely. I think you've done a great job. I think you've both done a great job. And as per usual, the brilliant thing is you've done this, which means you've done some work today already. Well, I think you're done now, you know. I love the wings, can I show everybody? A little bit of white around the edges, Miss Alex is really nice. If anything, I'm just like a bit bigger. So we've got Harris is there, and this is Harris's little one. Very cute. Also in the classroom, when I've done this in the classroom before, we've actually made them a honeycomb hexagon shape. And every boy and girl's done a hexagon, and then we put it together to make one big grid. Always looks fantastic as a, as a wall display. Um, right, last thing I just wanted to say was with your black, you can now go round. Oh, actually, let's make his head a little Mom. bit funny. Yeah. Do you need to go mush it? Pardon? Castle. You can't have the castle out at the minute. I'm busy talking to the audience. But you can okay. go wash your hands in the bathroom, please. Not there, though, in the bathroom. Alice, did you have to do that in here? You're going to make a complete <gasps> racket. Go wash them in the bathroom, please. Okay, 
Okay, so for your finishing touches, you can then go around with the black, which just helps strengthen your drawing. Gives it a much more striking effect. Oh, shut that door. Monkeys have been released. Daddy will be home soon from his walk, he can deal with them. And it just helps strengthen that. So boys and girls, I cannot wait to see how you've gotten on with this. Sophie, you have done something similar with this. I know with Miss Drysdale, because I think that's what you did for your class charter. So you'll have done a brilliant job of this today. But I don't know if you will have ever done a bumblebee that's got... I, don't, I can't remember how you did your bumblebees. But I'd like to see how you get on with don drawing all those parts and trying to get your size right and stuff. Um, and Mrs Rowe, I can't wait to see yours as well because I know that you're going to hopefully send this into Grayson. Let's see if we can try and get it on the show. Wouldn't that be nice? So yeah, tips for the day. It's lovely, it's done a great job. Tips for the day. If you don't have them already, go away and get some oil pastels because when you layer them up, they really look like paint. Give you really nice effects without all the mess because now all we do is we put the sticks back in the box, put the lid on, chuck them in the cupboard, done. Um, tip number two for the day, Harris, no, is layer your colours. So go the lighter shades first when you're painting especially or when you're using all the pastels. Go lighter first, then your middle colours, then your darker colours last because you cannot get rid of them when you're using paint. You could, but you would have to leave it to dry and then paint on top. Um, you would never get rid of it. And that's it. I'm going to go and deal with this lot. I'm going to have a cup of tea. And that only lasted half an hour, so that was quite good. Um, I hope you're all well. I'm going to post this afterwards. So, fingers crossed I've not made any mistakes today. And remember, remember, remember to send me your photos. Alex wants to say goodbye. Yeah, come over here. Bye. Okay, I'm going to go now. Yeah, come over here. Absolutely no. crazy. Yeah. Um, tomorrow is just a drawing lesson tomorrow, but you can add colour as well after we're finished the lesson. It's going to be looking at portraits. Last week we looked at them but by using grids. We've got some interesting results actually. But tomorrow it's going to be a bit more creative, a bit more visual, so you're actually looking at what you're seeing and interpreting it in a different way. So in tomorrow we'll need a mirror, a pencil and a piece of paper and probably a rubber as well. And I'm going to say goodbye and go and give these a round for making so much noise.